In today's lesson, we're going to continue looking at patterns to algebra. However, we're going to be focusing on visual patterns that only have one color. So if we look at this example here, can you determine the rule for this pattern? And then if you can come up with the rule, how many tiles would you think would be required to create the 11th position? So using what we've done before, there's multiple ways you could figure this out. It's a little bit harder to see which parts of our pattern are staying the same and which part is changing because we only have one color. Now you could look and see what the difference is between one pattern and the next, or from step or one position to the next, so step one to step two, step two to step three, and we should see that we're increasing by four every time. We might also see that if I look at my image or my pattern, I can see that I'm adding four squares onto the corners here, and those are continuing out in each position. So from here, you could determine that this increase of four, this change of four, or this addition of four little squares in each position number, that this represents my multiplier. You could also think, okay, well, if I'm looking at this pattern, I'm adding four squares on every time. The only thing that I can't really add four squares onto would be this kind of center object. So this center object is kind of what's staying the same. And if it's staying the same, then that means it's our constant. Now, you could also reason out the constant another way, because if we reverse the pattern, and take away four of our blocks, we would only, we're at position zero, and at position zero we talked about that's whatever our value is there, that's our constant, we would have only one center block, which would also be our constant. So here, because we know our multiplier is the plus four, So we have the two different ways of figuring out the plus four, and we know our constant is either that center block or this one. That means our rule has to be the following. We could say y equals 4x plus one. You could also say something along the lines of tiles or number of tiles are equals to four times the position number plus one. Additionally, if you don't like the visual pattern, you can always create a table very similar to our input and output table. Position number and tiles, and we'd say one, two, three, and then we have five, nine, and 13. We can see that it's increasing every time by four, which again tells us what our multiplier is. And if we work backwards in this pattern to position zero, we get a constant or we get a value of one. So that would be our constant. So again, different ways we can visualize it. If you don't like visualizing it, you can always put it into a table and use that input output kind of idea to figure it out. So using this rule, how many tiles will be required to create the 11th position? Well, regardless of which formula we use, we should recognize that we're going to be multiplying the position number by four. So mathematically four times 11, plus one, 44 plus one. So mathematically, that's what it would look like. If you had to do it in steps, you could easily do that as well. Say four times 11 equals 44, and we do four plus, or 44 plus one, which equals 45. So again, multiple ways you can do it. Um, the one on the left or the first way we calculate this with kind of your more standard mathematical way.
Let's look at another example of patterns with one color. So what would the fourth position be based on what we see here in our pattern? Looking at this pattern, it's a little bit easier to kind of see what's going to happen because we can see what's changing every time. We can see that we're adding a new row in the middle here. So we should have four rows of three. And we can see, or hopefully we can see, that these little shapes on the end, or these diamonds on the corners, are not changing. So if I want to come up with my rule, again, I could look and come up with a table if I wanted to as well. Position number, number of tiles, one, two, three, four, and then got seven, 10, 13, 16 as our table and try to reason the input output table there. Or what I could do is see what's changing every time. So I'm adding a new row of three every time. So if I look at my pattern, each position, I'm increasing by three, which again, I can see on my table as well. Oops, not plus four, plus three, plus three. So again, this is my multiplier. It's what my pattern's changing by every time. To figure out what our constant is, we would have to figure out, okay, what's staying the same? In this case, we can see these little four squares on the end, they're staying the same throughout. So that's our constant. The four squares or four is our constant. Again, we could figure that out in our table because we know that if I find out what input value of zero is, then the output value would tell me what the constant is. So in this case, if I reverse the pattern, seven minus three, I get four. So just another way to see where our constant is. So going to our rule, number of tiles equals the position number times three plus four. Or you could write it as y equals four x, sorry, not four x, three x plus four. Or and if you don't like y and x, you could say the number of tiles is equal to three times the position number plus four. Right. Again, it might be easier to use letters rather than writing out these full phrases every time. So how did we guess the rule? Well, we came up with multiple ways, using the visual pattern and seeing what's changing, or we used the table. Which part of the pattern shows the constant? In this case, it's the four diamond shapes. the four diamond shapes. Which part shows the multiplier? So in this case, it was the row of three. Actually, let me go back and color code that for us. So the row of three was our multiplier. Which part of the rule is the multiplier slash the constant? Or sorry, which part of the rule is the multiplier and which part is the constant? Well, in this case, the multiplier, say m equals three, and the constant is four. So is it easier to guess the rule with one or two colors of tiles? Now, you may have different opinions on it or you may not have an opinion. It may be the same for you regardless. But I would say, generally speaking, two colors of tiles, one color for the multiplier and one color for the constant, tends to be a little bit easier to guess the rule because you don't really even need to recognize the pattern so much um, in terms of figuring out what's the constant and what's the multiplier. 
When you only have one color, you really need to pay attention and really focus on what's changing. So again, depends on how you are with this. Um, it could be that neither, neither color or neither situation um, is, is any different, or you may find that one is easier than the other, but generally speaking, like I said, I would say two colors tend to be easier. One last example, again, we're looking at the same thing, patterns with one color. Now again, this one may be a little bit easier. So if I wanna figure out one, I know one, I know two, I know three, I'm looking for position seven. I need to think about, okay, what is changing in my pattern every time? And is there something, or is there a way that I can tell what's the same and what's, cha and what's changing, right? Looking for that multiplier and that constant again. Looking at my pattern, I should be able to see that these two little legs here don't really seem to change as I go from pattern or position to position. The only thing that's changing is that I'm adding a new row on top every single time. Or in other words, I'm adding five every single time, or a row of five. And these little green parts are staying the same. So that means my green parts are my constant, and the five, or the plus five, represents the multiplier. So if I think about, well, what's the connection between the position number and the multiplier, or sorry, the position number and the multiplier, I can see that for whatever my position number is, I'm gonna multiply that by five because that's gonna tell me how many rows of five I have. So if I can imagine rows or position seven, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven rows of five. And I'm still gonna have my two little legs on the bottom. Again, if visually you couldn't see that and you prefer a table, again, you can always create the table. Position number, number of tiles, we know one, two, three. Position one, there are seven. Position two, there are 12, and then 17. So again, recognizing, well, my output is increasing by five every time for every consecutive position number or consecutive input. And if I wanted to work backwards to get to position zero, I would have an output of two or two tiles, which again tells me my constant. So going to my number of tiles or my rule, sorry, number of tiles equals position number times five plus two. Right, five was the multiplier of what we increased by every time and two was our constant. So which part of the pattern shows the constant? Again, we'll say the two legs. And which part shows the multiplier? We'll draw a row of five. One, two, three, four, five. Which part of the rule is the multiplier and which part is the constant? Well, M for our multiplier is in this case five, and our constant is two. And again, is it easier to guess the rule with one or two colors? Well, in this case, again, the pattern was fairly easy to tell. It was easy to tell what was changing and what wasn't. If we just had, say, a row, one long row of tiles, that might be a little different. So I would say it depends on how the pattern is laid out. The last two patterns we looked at may not have been that difficult, but say for example, instead of having seven squares or tiles laid out like we just saw, maybe we had a single tall row, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like this, and then we had another row, just a vertical row, just stacking on top. That may be a little bit more difficult because it's harder to see what's changing and what's not. 
but again, hopefully visually, you can still kind of count the number of tiles or count the difference and see what's changing um, to figure out the multiplier. And again, you can do the same thing in the table, which we've done over here. So again, regardless of which way you prefer, um, you should hopefully still be able to get to the same conclusion or same rule in the end. So again, this was just to practice again, identifying the constant and multiplier for a rule. So please make sure you're comfortable with those um, terms and how to find them. Um, we've looked previously at two colored patterns. Hopefully now we've kind of challenged you a little bit with one colored patterns um, to give you a better or more solid understanding of the rules.